Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a genetic disorder with a guarded prognosis which occurs in about 1 in 500 individuals. It is an autosomal dominant disorder with variable penetrance with either a defect in sarcomeric protein genes which encode for myosin heavy chain, actin or tropomyosin or due to abnormal myocardial calcium kinetics which increase intracellular calcium causing hypertrophy and cellular disarray. Echocardiography is the sheet anchor of diagnosis of HCM and other modalities are complementary. MYH7 mutation in the gene which encodes for beta myosin heavy chain located on chromosome 14 is found in about 15 to 25 percent of cases of HCM. MYBPC3 which encodes for cardiac myosin binding protein C is abnormal in another 15 to 25 percent cases. Besides these, several other mutations have been described, some of which are available for commercial testing. There are several phenocopies of HCM caused by other disorders like Bath syndrome, Danon syndrome, Pombe's disease, Fabry's disease, Frederick's ataxia, and Noonan syndrome. Genetic markers for several of these disorders are also available commercially. Sigmoidal HCM, which is about 40 to 50 percent, has about 10 percent positivity for myofilament gene. Reverse curve HCM occurs in 30 to 40 percent cases and has a myofilament gene in 80 percent of them. Epical HCM and neutral HCM with symmetric hypertrophy contributes 10 percent each and has 30 to 40 percent positivity of myofilament gene. The most common symptom of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is dyspnea which occurs in 90% of cases and is due to elevated left ventricular diastolic pressures as a consequence of the diastolic dysfunction. Angina is another common symptom due to the hypertrophy which causes a coronary supply demand mismatch. Symptoms of HCM include syncope or near syncope which could be precipitated by exertion hypovolemia, rapid standing, valsalva manua, diuretics, vasodilators or arrhythmia. Palpitation can be felt if there are arrhythmias. Physical signs in HCM. The carotid pulse is jerky and may have dual peaks, but the second peak is often appreciated only in a pulse tracing rather than on palpation because it is somewhat rounded. Jugular venous pulse may show a prominent A wave. Double or triple apical impulses can be felt in HCM. In case of triple impulse, it is one diastolic due to forceful atrial contraction and two systolic impulses due to mid systolic obstruction. Paradoxical splitting of second heart sound can occur due to the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. A third heart sound occurs when the left ventricle decompensates in late stages of HCM. A prominent fourth heart sound is usual in HCM due to the diastolic dysfunction which causes forceful atrial contraction. Dynamic auscultatory features are important in the diagnosis of HCM. The systolic ejection murmur increases with a decreased preload as in volume depletion, nitrate therapy, or standing or a decreased afterload with vasodilators. The murmur decreases with an increase in preload or afterload isometric hand grip. The post ectopic increase in murmur is a hallmark of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy which differentiates it clinically from mitral valve prolapse. ECG changes in HCM. ST T wave abnormalities are common with ST segment depression and T wave inversion predominating. Left ventricular hypertrophy, left atrial enlargement, QRS axis deviation, left more than right, conduction abnormalities like increased PR interval and bundle branch block may be noted. Atrial fibrillation if present indicates poor prognosis as hemodynamic decompensation occurs due to loss of atrial booster action 
which is vital for the filling of a hypertrophied left ventricle with severe diastolic dysfunction. Echocardiography in HCM Important echocardiographic features include mitral regurgitation and left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. The ejection fraction is high to normal except in late decompensated stage. Small left ventricular cavity and left atrial enlargement are other features. Septal thickness is often 4 to 6 mm more than normal. Asymmetric septal hypertrophy with absolute thickness more than 15 mm. Septal to posterior wall ratio more than 1.3 in normotensives and more than 1.5 in hypertensives are some of the features. Rarely, normal septal thickness can occur in genotype positive cases, especially in cardiac troponin T mutations. Normal echo earlier in life can occur in cardiac myosin binding protein C mutation, which mandates repeat echo evaluation after 5 years. Apical hypertrophy can produce an ace of spades configuration of the left ventricular cavity. While assessing the severity of HCM, maximal wall thickness in multiple segments, length of septal hypertrophy, extension to apical segments, and involvement of papillary muscles, anterior displacement or direct insertion into mitral valve have all to be looked into. Echocardiogram showing thickened interventricular septum and mitral regurgitation in HCM. SAM in HCM. Systolic anterior movement of mitral valve occurs in 30 to 60 percent cases, but it is not specific. SAM causes LVOTO, increased ejection time, and a decreased stroke volume, as well as mitral regurgitation due to poor cooptation of the leaflets. Severity of SAM can be quantified by SAM septal contact time. In mild cases, it is less than 10% and in severe cases, it is more than 30% of the systole. LVOTO in HCM Peak gradient more than 30 mm of mercury predicts a CD in HCM, though the gradients may be much higher in some cases. LVOTO is due to septal hypertrophy, SAM, and anterior displacement of mitral valve apparatus. Doppler echo showing LVOT gradient in HCM. Mid cavitary obstruction in HCM is associated with apical aneurysm, systemic embolism, and arrhythmias. Cases are on record in which ablation of the fourth septal artery has been done to ameliorate the obstruction in mid cavitary obstruction. Dynamic gradient in HCM. Dynamic gradient occurs in 25 to 30% and depends on blood volume or contractile state. Dynamic gradient may be sought by glycerol trinitrate, valsalva maneuver, standing position or even symptom limited exercise. Obstruction may occur during recovery and post exercise monitoring of gradient is mandatory. False negative echo in HCM, distal or apical hypertrophy may be missed and is best estimated on sequential short axis views. Wall thickness may be normal in children and adolescents. Cardiac troponin T mutations as well as in end stage HCM with dilated LV. False positive echo in HCM, oblique cut or foreshortened views and sigmoid septum in elderly can cause false positive diagnosis of HCM. Thin posterior wall in inferior wall myocardial infarction causing abnormal septal to posterior wall ratio can also cause suspicion of ASH. LVOT gradients in hyperdynamic states may also be mistook for LVOT obstruction in HCM. Differential diagnosis of HCM Differential diagnosis is not just by echo, but there is vital role for history and clinical examination. Hypertensive heart disease is an important differential diagnosis, but SAM is rare in this situation and there is evidence of greater diastolic dysfunction in HCM. Athlete's heart is another entity with hypertrophy which may be confused with HCM. 
normal or supernormal tissue doppler velocities in athlete's heart contrast with impaired velocities in hcm lv cavity dilatation is seen in athlete's heart cardiac amyloid is manifested with thickened interatrial septum increased myocardial echogenicity and thickening of wall leaflets cardiac cath cardiac cath has a limited role in the diagnosis of hcm in this era of echocardiography degree of outflow obstruction can be documented along with the classical broken bro brown wall morrow sign the sign is an increased lvot gradient after a ventricular premature complex evaluation of diastolic characteristics of lv and lv and coronary anatomy evaluation are other diagnostic uses of cath in hcm the role of cath nowadays is mostly for septal ablation holter monitoring holter monitoring is useful to document non sustained atrial or ventricular arrhythmias which may not be obvious clinically contrast enhanced magnetic resonance imaging delayed enhancement on contrast enhanced mri is useful in documenting fibrosis in hcm which is a predictor of systolic dysfunction and has a relation to heart failure symptoms